So let's go for the claws first. I've done some hard work now for the easy stuff. Use the back of a knife or a hammer just to break the shell. A knife is a good thing to break the shell. A hammer you have to be a bit more careful with because what you're trying to do, although there are bits of shells flying all over the room, you're trying to actually cut the, break up the shell but not break it too radically so that it doesn't fly everywhere. And the back of a knife is the best thing. Don't use the blade. Not a good idea, not on these big shells. There we go. So then I just work through the claw meat, trying to get as big a piece as possible out of it. The main claw joint in the centre of the meat, there is a piece of membranous bone, I suppose you could describe it, which you need to get rid of. But what, as I said, what I'm trying to do is to get nice big lumps of meat. So that's how you do the claws. There's the big section. Just make sure that all the meat in the claws is taken out, and particularly when these cock crabs, the male crabs, the claws have much more meat in them than, than the female crabs. And that is the most rewarding part of crab picking. I won't bore you with doing any other of these. I just want to move on to the legs. Before that, I'm just going to go into the bowl and just pick the meat up and drop it a little bit. And you notice I put, I always use steel bowls for doing my crab picking because if the unthinkable happens and a little bit of shell is left with the meat, you can hear it clicking against the bowl. So now the same thing with the legs, but I can actually use the blade of the knife here just to part the biggest joint. Uh, I don't tend to bother with these little joints here on anything but the biggest crabs um, because, as I said, I, I do use all my shells for making soups and it is quite labour intensive doing that. I will do a, a one leg for you just um, as you can see how it's done. You only get a little tiny little sort of slip of meat out of these little joints, just a piece like that, but if you pay good money for your crab, you probably want to do that. Uh, but again, I've made sure that I get all the meat out of the joint that went into the body, and this bit is really good to get the meat out of. And just sort of breaking the shell as gently as I can, like that. So, you continue to build, do that, building up your collection of white meat. You might be interested that the normal ratio of meat to shell in a crab is about one third. So therefore, a one kilo crab would yield you about 330 grams of brown and white meat. So that's the white meat, the brown. Um, I will pour off this juice here again. I will freeze it and use it in making a bisque or something like that so that the brown meat gets as dry as possible. And now I scoop out the brown meat into a second bowl. I always find I, I, I actually like the taste of brown meat but I like it mixed with a bit of white and a bit of mayonnaise. It's very, very, in a salad, it's very rich. So there we are. Now for the rest of the crab. Just pour some of that away. I'm now going to push out the mouth like that and behind the mouth is the stomach sac which is no good for anybody and behind that is a bit more meat. Now if I wanted to um, prepare a, a shell like this for a dress crab it's very nice quite often to, um, to use that crab to put a sort of couple of lines of white meat and some brown meat, maybe some chopped egg and parsley and things. Just give that a little tap and it breaks down the natural line like that. And the similar on the other side. Have to be a bit gentle because it can crack the whole thing. And there you have a natural dish from baking a dress crab. And normally the way you do a dress crab is you fill either corner with white meat, then you probably have a two lines of brown meat, a bit more white in the middle, line of parsley, line of chopped egg. Looks great.